the Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod, King Herod saw this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd to my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May the Lord bless to us the reading of this his holy word. Friends, before we begin listening to the word, uh, I had two babies tell me good news today. So usually one baby or a baby. Uh, the first one, I'm told that there's a special day today because our organist or music director, Kevin Williams, is 44 years being a member and doing the work here at BMC. Thank you so much. Let's give him a round of applause. We thank you, Kevin, for your service here at BMC. May God bless you. And the second baby tells me, the good news again, that we have people here that are on Tuesday, they'll be celebrating 53 years of marriage. And that is Dave and Lynn Cross. Please stand as we clap for you. I'm not sure where they are. Oh, there they are. <laughs> thank you. May you enjoy your anniversary on Tuesday and may God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment as we come to listen to your word. Bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know now why, because now it's, we've got 25 minutes left. Now it makes sense because when I was preparing my sermon, I've never prepared a, a two-page sermon. And I was wondering. I kept typing and God didn't give me more, more things to write. I'm like, but why two pages, God? And now I know it's because I won't have enough time to preach more than two pages. So God works in wonders. Friends, today we are introduced in a story, as you know, today marks the end of Christmas season. Because in the olden days of Jewish custom, Christmas was actually 12 days. So they will start it on Christmas Eve, which is the 24th, and carry on for 12 days. Let alone now, we only celebrate it in one day. But I'm sure with all the food we cook, it's two or three days because there's too much to eat. I know in my house, I was like, can't this food just end now? <laughs> because I can see what's happening. <laughs> and now I have to go back to gym. And then if I don't go back to gym, Paul will see that I don't go. And then he's going to ask, Where, what's happening? <laughs> so, so they used to celebrate it for 12 days. So now it marks the end of the Christmas season. And the beginning of the season that we call Epiph Epipheth, what? Epiphany. Thank you. Epiphany, right? It happens, eh? <laughs> so the season of Epiphany actually uh, is the beginning or is the, is the Jewish word that refers to the showing or the revelation of Jesus Christ to the world. Because if you remember, Jesus was known as the King of the Jews. But this season reminds us that Jesus is being revealed to all of us 
to the entire world and is for all of us. And it also marks the reminder of the, of the three wise men, the mages. And I, I don't know the word where it comes from, but I know it's a Greek word, but I prefer to call them wise men. Remember the wise men who came with the gifts to Jesus. So it's also a reminder of that, of what happens. And, and history tells us that those gifts had a meaning. It was not just a matter of them delivering gifts to him, that the gold represented his royal standing, as we know that Jesus is the king, and the frankincense uh, resembled his divine birth, Jesus as the divine human, and also the mere his mortality, that he will be with us forever. So those gifts had a meaning when they delivered them to Jesus Christ. So the theme today is find, because these wise men were trying to find Jesus Christ. And my sub-theme is seeking the true king. Because the story, if you notice, there's King Herod, but also there's Jesus as the new king. And I want to base this on Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, where it says, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. So today what I want to talk about is what do we learn from this story? These men trying to find Jesus or these men seeking the true king which is Jesus Christ. What do we learn from this story? Is the story only about the wise men trying to find Jesus? Is the story about King Herod who's trying to kill Jesus, trying to find a way to make sure that he's the only king? And friends, there are four things I want to talk about tonight, today that reminds us of what, what we learn from this story. And as we journey through Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12, there's just four things I want to share this morning that we learn from this story. The first thing that we learn from this story is that even the wise still need the guidance of God. Even the wise still need the guidance of God. Listen to this, Matthew chapter 2, verse 2b. We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to follow him. These men, these, because the reason we are saying there are three wise men is because of the three gifts. But the Bible doesn't tell us how many there are. Some, some translations said there were three kings. There were kings. But the reason we are saying there are three is because of the gifts that they brought. So we assume that there were three of them. But what we know about them is that they were very intelligent men. They were known as wise men, the best of the best, because they were known to tell the future. People will go to them and say, tell us about the future, which I don't think they knew, but that's what people believed. So they were wise. So people respected them. People knew that whenever they go to them, they have answers for everything. People knew that whenever you are in need or you want guidance, you will go to the wise men from the east and they will give you the answer that you need to your problem. But guess what? At this moment, they couldn't find where Jesus was until the star led them to Jesus. So friends, you can see yourself or you can be seen as wise or you can think you're wise, you know it all. But let me tell you, without the guidance of God, you will fumble. What this teaches us is that as much as these men were respected, as much as these men were well known, as much as these men had answered to everything, but at this time they needed a star which was the sign from God to lead them to where Jesus Christ was. Friends, in times of need, let me tell you this morning that there is a star that will guide you to the solution. When you are confused this year, when you start the year, if you have started the year on a bad note with a loss of a loved one, with a loss of a friend, or you do not know how you're going to navigate 2019, let me tell you, there is a star that will lead you to find answers for 2019. And that star is not your brain, is not your cleverness. That star is not the fact that you know it all, but that star is the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Remember what the Bible says when Jesus left, he said to the disciples I will, in John 16, I will send you the one that will guide you and lead you and comfort you and show you the way. So the star is the reminder that even the wise, they need the guidance of God. 
don't know about you, but I'm not going to name names, but I've got a friend of mine in Pretoria that every time we're together, he's the, he thinks he's the wisest in our group. He's got answers to everything. If, we, if we're traveling as friends, he doesn't need the navigator. He knows the way. If you get lost, it's because we were, ki- we were talking to him. We disturbed him on the way. That's why he turned the wrong way. So we're always the wrong ones. So I've got a friend like that. If anything goes wrong, no, no, it's not my fault. It's you guys. I remember this one day, went to his house, and as usual, he's the one that is clever. He said, no, we don't have time. We need to buy, you know, tin stuff for lunch and all of that. And then I said to him, well, I love, you know, those, uh, the beetroot, the one, tin, the one on the bottle. I said, buy one of those for me. Then we bought one of those, and we're preparing lunch and all of that. And I, I couldn't believe it because he's, he's thin. I know some of you have seen, I know Raymond knows who he is. <laughs> I'm glad that none of you knows. <laughs> and, and as we go to the house, so he's thin, and you can see I'm big, and other friend is bigger, but I'm the biggest in the group. So we, we, we go to his house, and we prepare the lunch, and he was about to open this can of beetroot, and I, I, I laughed at him. As thin as he was, he was trying to twist. Uh, he couldn't. He tried his best. And I said to him, maybe you could ask us to help you. He said, no, no, it's the manufacturer problem, I'm sure. I, could, I, I, I always do this. So friends, I want to say to you, there are times in life where there will be things we can't do by ourselves. There are things that we cannot do even when we try hard. But let us allow the star to lead us and help us. So the star that I'm talking about, I'm not saying to you, when you walk around the streets of Bedford View, you will see a star. But God will send people that will help you throughout the way. And those people are the stars that are sent by God to lead you. No matter how wise you are, remember these words. Even the wise, they need God to find the way. So in 2019, just be reminded that God, there is a star out there. Here to what Isaiah said in, verse, in, in chapter 58, verse 11, God will guide you always and satisfy all your needs. The star is there to guide us is there to satisfy our needs, is there to remind us that God is always with us. It's the star that I'm talking about. Remember, when Joshua was scared to lead the Israelites, God reminded him that I will be that star. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will guide you. Remember when when Moses was scared and said, but God, I can't go back to Pharaoh and talk to him. I've done all these things. And God says, I am with you. So that's the star, friends. So remember, in 2019, you're not alone. Even if how you started 2019, you're not alone. You're not alone. God is with you through the stars. I don't know who is going to be your star this year, or which star God is going to send in your way, but let me tell you, a star will come. And, and, And when the star starts guiding you, you will know now that you are guided by God. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel there's no way out and you feel defeated? But at the last moment, someone comes and provides a solution. It is not because they are clever. It is because God has sent them to be the star in your life. So friends, that's the first thing we learn from this story. That even the wise need the guidance of God. The second thing we learn from this story, in 2019, friends, be careful of King Herod. Be careful of King Herod. Remember when they came to him and shared the good news that there is a new king, a star is leading us to the new king, where can we find him? He acted as if he was happy for them, he was happy to find the new king. He acted as if he's accepting the whole situation. He acted as if he was part of the journey, but his main intention was to destroy. His main intention was to kill Jesus Christ because he was insecure of his environment. It pains my heart to say this, but I have to say it. Not everyone wishes you the best in life. Be careful of that. Be careful of King Herod. In 2019, 
Because remember, the problem with King Herod, I can imagine he was smiling as the king, sitting on his chair, acting as if, you know what, I'm happy of what is happening, and I want to embrace this Christ, I want to embrace you, I w- and, and, and that's where the problem is. Because the Bible says, you won't see them. They come wearing the sheep, sheep's cloth or skin. You won't see them coming. So in 2019, be careful. I know, as your minister, you want to hear the good news of saying everyone is good, everyone is perfect, everyone is loving. But friends, the truth of the matter, we've learned that Jesus Christ himself had a man that was with him for three years, a man that was a treasurer of the group, a man that he trusted. But at the last moment, the same man, when he was offered money, he said, you will know by one thing, the one I'm going to kiss is the one who is Jesus that you need to kill. Be careful. Open your eyes. Know who is your friend and who is not your friend. Because Herod acted as a friend. He acted as if he was embracing. Jesus had to run away for years and go in Egypt to run away from Herod because he wanted to kill him. Be careful. So there will be those moments in your life There will be those moments. This story is teaching us to open our eyes. It's teaching us to be careful. It's teaching us to get to know people that are around us and close to us. Many people I've spoken to, they will tell me as a minister, and they will come crying to my office and say, the reason I'm in this mess is because of someone I trusted. It's because of someone I've confided into. It's because of someone who was close to me. So be careful of King Herod in 2019. That's what this story is teaching us. Secondly, friends, what this story teaches us, thirdly, sorry, what this story teaches us is that Jesus is the king for all humankind. Remember the problem or the thing with the birth of Jesus Christ that the Jews assumed and thought, but anyway, didn't assume through the scriptures because the scriptures were clear that the king of the Jews will be born. So Jesus was seen to come and only was born for the Jews and and those who are in the part of Jewish religion. So he was not for the Gentiles. He was not for me and you. He was not for the Romans. He was not for anyone else but for the Jews. But now God is teaching us through this story because the story does not say God chose the Jewish people to find Jesus and bring him the first gifts. Remember, even, even if you follow the story of Jesus Christ, God had a tendency of using the people that were un- unexpected to be used by him in this journey. For example, Mary, we don't hear, she's an unknown woman. We don't hear any that was related to any kings. You come to the shepherds. When, when the news were told to the shepherds, when the angel came to the shepherds, you come now to the wise men. So what this is teaching us is that, yes, the prophecies said that Jesus, the king of the Jews, is coming. But when Jesus came, he was clear that I'm a friend of sinners. I've come for the sinners. I've come for those who are not good. So this is reminding us that Jesus Christ is the king of all humankind. He's not for the selected few. So it's a reminder that Jesus is for me, Jesus is for you. And the fact that in the eyes of Jesus or in the eyes of God, we are all equal, regardless of our religion. Race, gender. So it's a reminder for us Christians, sometimes when we get the pride of saying we are the children of God, to remember that everyone is a child of God, regardless of what they've done. And and I can assume and I can imagine how difficult this was for the Jewish nation to realize that their Messiah is not only for them. And I think that is why many Jews still believe their king is still coming. Jesus is not the one. Because for them, someone would come that will save them and be for them and for their salvation. And everyone else needed to be part of the Jewish religion. But this story is teaching us that God can use anyone for his kingdom. God can use anyone 
Friends, God is not selective. God is not exclusive. When God wants to use you, he will use you regardless of your history, regardless of your background. Yes, the story tells us of wise men, but the wise men were not from the, from the Jewish family. So that's a reminder, even if they are wise men, but they were not accepted by the Jews to be the ones. Imagine coming to the Messiah who's the Jew, and the first people that come are not the Jews to come and give him the gifts. So that's a reminder that God loves us equally. That's a reminder that Christ is for all of us. That's a reminder. This story is reminding us that he is our king. So friends, never sell yourself short. You must know Jesus is for you. When you stand, you must stand proud knowing that he died for you. He was born for you. He was born to make changes in your life. He was born to bless your life. He was born for you, not for the selected few. Hence, even when we speak about ministries at church, you will never hear us saying, this ministry is for these kind of people. Ministry is for everyone. That's why Paul, in his writing, especially in the book of Hebrews, he speaks of priesthood of all believers. Because he knows that we, all, we are all called by God to be priests, to minister to others, to bring the word of God to others. So Jesus is the king for all humankind. And the last thing, friends, before we go to communion is that this story is teaching us to go and seek or find our true king, who is Jesus Christ. Lastly, this story is reminding us to go find Jesus or to go seek our true king, who is Jesus Christ. So I want to say in 2019, friends, as we prepare ourselves for communion, that in 2019, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's your year to find Jesus or seek Jesus. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Matthew, seek ye the kingdom of God first and everything will be granted unto you. So this year is not about us seeking the blessings of God, seeking the mercies of God, seeking the grace of God, seeking to be given everything by God, but it's the year for us to seek God first because when we find him, everything falls into place. So this story is reminding us then that for those who are still far from the kingdom of God, for those who are still searching, for those who are still finding themselves, for those who are still seeking God, it is time for you to seek him because he's the king for you as well. So 2019 or this verse, friends, open us, open us to possibilities of having a relationship with God if we don't. This verse opens possibilities for everyone to be in a loving relationship with God, to know that to earn this grace, to earn this love of God, you do not need to do anything. All you need to do is to seek him, and he will do the rest for you. So whenever in 2019 you find yourself confused whenever in 2019 you find yourself not knowing what to do with your own life, ask yourself this question, have I found Jesus? Because it's the answer to all questions. Because once you find him, you find answers to all your questions. So it is my prayer and wish that this year we'll strive in finding Jesus Christ. And friends, for those who are struggling, we've got people that can help you in that relationship. I'm here. My office is open. Raymond is here. His office is open. If you're struggling in your relationship with Jesus in 2019, it's time to take a stand and say, I want to be in love with God. And friends, it is up to you to have that relationship with Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.